Houston, we don't have a problem. I want to start with a bit of a confession. Um, I'm a physics teacher, and I've struggled with the concept of voltage for a long time to understand what it means. And I've tried to think of analogies, and I think I finally figured out a way to kind of explain this. So today's video, I want to talk about two key things. Where does electrical energy come from? And then how can I picture what voltage is? And I'm going to use gravity as our... So let's first talk about the concept of electric potential energy. So we understand, I think, the concept of uh, potential energy, but let's use two images to kind of illustrate this. So you know that if I have a book, image one, and I lift the book up, then I can give the book potential energy. I'm fighting against gravity to um, lift the book up, and then you give it potential energy. And in the second case, with the spring right here, what you've got is I can compress the spring, and that gives you uh, spring potential energy. So you can, by doing work against the spring, in this example, or by doing work against gravity, then I can create energy. Because if I drop the book or release the spring, then I get energy. With electric potential energy, it's the same idea is that I have a charge, okay? So let's say I'm holding, like as you see in the image, I'm holding a positive charge, and as I go towards the other positive charge over on this side, and I push over this way, then that's going to, because positive charge repels, right? as I push against them, that creates potential energy, because it wants to bounce back, like the spring, doesn't it? Because as I push against it, because it comes down to really the idea of fields. So when we talk about fields, and, and we, we had a video recently about electric fields, is when you are, you're fighting against something, right? So when I'm pushing against, you know, the previous picture here, when I'm pushing against this, I'm pushing against an electric field, right? It's, it's no different than if we go to the Earth, right? And the Earth has a gravitational field down, and when I lift an object up, what's going is, is I have to do work against gravity. Now, gravity is always pointed down. Electric fields are different, right? They have different directions, but the analogy works. And I, I, let's do a, a big comparison between a gravity versus electric field. So let's get the line here, and we're going to say this side is is gravity, I'll put a G here, and an E here, right? So we've got two distinct things. And we're going to talk about it sort of from an equational perspective. So if you recall from gravity, right, the first thing we know in gravity is that we can do, say, force. And force, if you recall, is uh, the force of gravity is, this is the gravity side, is G M M over R squared, right? Or we could actually simplify this and just say mg. So, and this is measured in a newton. So for the force of gravity, this is the, the universal gravitational law. It's gmm over r squared. Now, if I do force on the electrical side, you remember from another previous video that force kqq over r squared. So here we have two objects that have mass that are attracted to each other, and then the gravitational constants. You see these two equations are about the same thing, but instead of it being two masses and with a different constant, you've got two charges, right? Q1 and Q2 are the charges. And of course, what do we measure that in? Newtons, right? And maybe to kind of picture this, actually, let me, let me draw a picture. Let's pretend that I have a house right here, right? And in that house, and I've got a ball, and I'm going to have somebody standing on the roof of the house, maybe, and you're going to, you know, you can do work on the ball going up. And if we're to do um, electricity, we'll do a little bit of a slightly different thing. On this side, I'm going to charge some piece of metal. So this is a piece of metal positive. And over here, I'm going to charge this piece negative. Okay? So I've got two situations. I've got somebody working against gravity, and here we're going to, you'll see, working against um, this, right? And so what we have next is, of course, there's a field. So let's talk about a field. 
So each of these have a field. Now, the one we understand very well is the gravitational field. Now, gravity, as you remember, always points downward, and that's sort of assuming a flat Earth. It's not 100% true, but at a given point on Earth, it's pretty much just we've always said gravity is down, right? Now, if what is the field in the case of of this is, remember we said fields always go in the direction from positive to negative charge. But notice, though this is, they're all moving down, this is moving in this direction. Now, we could get more complex in that fields can also make arcs and curves and, and that kind of a thing, but let's just make this as simple as possible, right? Now, what is the strength of this field? Huh? The strength of this field is G. And if you're on Earth, on the surface of the Earth, it's 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, if you're uh, up, in the, up in the stratosphere, it's going to be some number smaller because the distance is smaller. So the, but the field is just G. But when we talk about an electric field, an electric field is going to be the strength of the field. Now, the strength of the field on the Earth is always 9.8. So this is where the analogy might break down a little bit. And the strength of the field here depends on where you're at. So it's not like you're always on one place on there. Now, if I was at this point right here, then the field strength would be the same. But I might be at this point with the charge as I'm pushing a charge here. And by the way, the units on the field, I'm going to do an equation in a minute, is going to be a Newton per coulomb. And even though we say meters per second squared, this is actually the Newtons per kilogram. So how many joules do you have per kilogram is what this actually breaks out to as well. And this is the Newtons per coulomb. And the equation for electric field, if you recall, is just KQ over R squared. And as by back way, the electrical or the gravitational field is GM over R squared. You remember maybe in a previous section, we said, well, how do you find the gravitational strength of something, you just take G times M over R squared. If I'm on a different planet or whatever, the mass of the planet times G divided by R squared, that's the strength of that field. But we just know it is just G. So that's the electric field. So what you're doing when you are moving a ball up, if I move the ball you know, up to this height, I'm fighting the gravitational field. If I take a charge over here, positive charge, or let's take a negative charge because that makes more sense, and I push it in this direction, then I am doing work on it. And if you're doing work on it, then you are, as you push it, you're doing, um, uh, you can now have something that can do work for you, I guess. As you, as you push on it, you create potential energy. So let's talk about potential energy. So energy in a gravitational field, we know this super well, is mgh. Right, I take that mass of that ball, I lift it up, up to the top of the seal or the house, whatever, and I'm doing work against gravity times h. Now, analogously, the energy on this side, by the way, don't mix energy with E, they're not the same thing. That's actually just going to be equal to Q E D. Now, notice how these things, Q is analogous to the mass, so this is the charge. And then the gravity is 9.8 on this side. On this side, this is the electric field, which in this case, it could be different depending on where you're at. And then D is the distance that I move it. How far do I move it a distance? So H is kind of like D. And so to understand this, now I'm headed to this sort of the last thing. I said, I finally understood voltage. I haven't, I haven't used the word volt yet. Now I'm about to use the word voltage. So sometimes we think this is the most useful thing, is energy. And, and we really stopped here in our course when we were talking about gravitational stuff, but there is one last thing, and not energy, and this is this would be potential energy, right? So is this. This is PE right here. PE. What I've got here, though, is there's a last thing, and we have a, a last term, and I, I didn't provide enough space here. We call it the potential. You need to add probably right here. The potential. Now, the potential is the voltage, and the voltage is actually just ED, capital P. So the potential is just E times D. Notice I've just taken the Q out, and then the units on that would be a uh, G, 
joule per coulomb. And this is a volt. So a volt is a joule per coulomb. So, it's at, so if I move my charge, right, I'm doing work as I move the charge, but how many joules are in each, how much energy, joule, is in each coulomb, electron, and it depends on where you're at, because if I move the charge over here, it's going to do uh, more work. It's not as analogous or as easy to completely understand what it means here. So this is where it kind of doesn't work. So the voltage, this is the more potential, because what happens is as the charges want to move in this direction, what we can do is we can create a constant voltage between these two um, charges. So if I know what the Q is here and the Qs are here, I can create a constant voltage. And you've heard about volts with batteries and such like that. Um, yeah, it, a, a way that people often analogize voltage is to think of it, to change our metaphors for just a moment, is it's really like the pressure. If you're to think of a water tank. So let's say I have a water tank, a big tank filled with water, and I got a valve coming out of the bottom. You know, and it's got a spigot. And it's filled with water, but at a certain point, there's an amount of pressure in this water. You know, you take a shower this morning or whatever, and uh, maybe you had high water pressure, you had low water pressure, and this is this right here is the pressure of the valve. And so if you have a high potential, then there's high pressure. You know, you could also fill this tank up further, and then you have a higher pressure yet, um, and there's ways to make the pressure higher or lower um, by changing actually the size of the valve. So it's more like the pressure, and you know that more pressure, if I have a super pressure valve, I can do more work. I have a, I have a power washer at my home to, to clean things off, and that shoots out at many, many thousand pounds per square inch, and that helps to clean sidewalks and all kinds of things because it's a very high pressure system. And how do they get that? They take the water, and then they compress the water, and then they put it through a very skinny nozzle. So a way to increase your pressure is to make this a very skinny nozzle. And if you make it a skinny nozzle, you can increase the pressure. And uh, what we often want, and you know this in sort of, you just, you know it intuitively, you've said, well, this battery is a 9-volt battery, or it's a 1.5-volt battery, or, you know, my cell phone right here, it, it uses so many volts of energy. Um, so potential is this concept of pressure, but an, a note, the units are joules per coulomb. And I know this is a lot of equations to try to understand this concept, but I think it helps us understand. Now, let me finish with one last analogy to help you understand voltage versus field. So think of it like you've got a ski slope. You've got several ski slopes. We've got a ski slope right here, and this ski slope has a height and it's got a slope, right? So there's a height and a slope. And I might draw a second one right here that is a very steep slope, but the same height. So I'm trying to draw these at the same height. So what it turns out is the voltage is related to the height. So if these are both the same height, they would have the same voltage, okay? But this is not a very steep slope, and this is a high steep slope, and the slope is going to be um, the electric field, right? This equals the slope of the line. So if you think about this, I mean, it makes sense. Like if I was in gravity, let's go back to the gravity analogy. This might be I'm on, on Jupiter where I've got a very steep slope because it's a very, it's not 9.8, it's 13 or 20, or I don't know what this it is. And then this might be a slope of 9.8. So the slope is the field, but the height how high, so you'd have the same voltage. Uh, I mean, it's really the same potential energy, right? But we're, we use this concept of voltage to understand, you know, how far you can fall. So, I mean, if you drop this, you know, MGH, it's the same on either side. And so voltage is kind of like how tall the slope is, and the field strength is the slope of the line. So I hope that's cleared up the concept of voltage, something I've never understood, and I hope the analogy between gravity and uh, electricity and electrical equations has helped you. Houston, we don't have a problem.